Welcome back, everyone, to episode 10 of the Spartan Journal podcast. Uh, today, I'm with Nate Jefferson and Matt Mancini. And today, we will discuss um, how costly could waiting to invest be and SoftBank and what that means and how they are important. Uh, towards the end of the discussion, we will move into a roundtable talking about Amazon uh, unions and how that uh, could affect other corporations as well in the long term. Um, so I'd like to welcome in Nate here uh, to talk about his article for this week. Hey, thanks, Jake. So I wrote about this week's topic because I found out that the average age that individuals typically start investing is 29 years old. Now, this completely blew my mind due to the fact that compound interest works best when time is in your favor, i.e. when you invest at a younger age. So I dig into the negative impacts of you investing at a older age rather than a younger age from the standpoint of how much money you'd have to invest each month or each year to be able to see a return of $1 million by the age of 65, which is retirement. So if you want to check that out, go ahead, look at my article and go ahead, give it a read. Uh, next, uh, we'll move on to Matt. Well, he'll talk about um, SoftBank and what that entails. Yeah. So SoftBank is a Japanese company where they're actually the second biggest company in uh, Japan, according to market capitalization. And they're so important because they've done a lot of SPAC deals. They've done a lot of IPOs. They own shares in a lot of different companies. So they're very kind of pivotal in the Japanese market. So if you want to learn more about that, you can just check out my article. Um, in current news this week, um, Amazon, a warehouse in Alabama has unionized. Um, there's currently a vote going on um, to deliver more, uh, a higher wage, better work conditions, um, and just a bunch of things that they they think could Amazon could do better in in the corporate space. Um, so, what do you guys make of this? Um, have you been, have you guys been following along, and uh, what do you guys make of it? I remember just scrolling through, I think it might have been Business Insider or maybe Wall Street Journal, and something popped up about union, uni, unionization um, through an Alabama facility of Amazon, right, of Amazons. And I was kind of surprised. I'm like, a union, like, usually you do that when you want better wages and better benefits. And when it comes to Amazon, like, they give their employees, like, $15 an hour off the jump benefits off the jump like we're talking healthcare, and then eventually a 401k match like that's pretty extensive and so when i was reading i was just like wow so like what are the results looking like like what do the people say about this whole situation and it seems like they're split on the decision whether or not they want to unionize and um i was like listening to a few testimonies of how some people were treated and uh, what they thought the reason was because of like because of their treatment and they're basically saying for the pro-union people that they were just not getting a fair wage. They felt like they deserved more. Um, they felt like the company was able to give them more um, and they felt like they weren't really being protected. On the other side of the spectrum, the people that were against the union, they were all saying like, hey, Amazon's giving us the best benefits that we can for our skill, basically. Like they're saying like, hey, in Alabama, the minimum wage for the state, I, I guess is $7.50. They're doubling that. They're giving us $15 an hour, right? On top of that, they're giving us benefits. But if you want training, the trainings are there. The resources are there. You just have to seek them out. And these are the individuals that are going against the unionization. So it's just crazy to see the dynamic and where it'll eventually go. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like a lot of the reason why they're against the union or why they are for the unions isn't really like, because, you know, they're, they were. I saw a couple of tweets where it was like, we don't really care about the $15 wage. We just care about getting correct work conditions. Like for instance, there's a lot of drivers that they are really pressed to meet these minimums. They're given like 300 packages a day. And if you don't deliver all of them, then you could get an infraction and more infractions could leave, lead to you getting fired. So they just have zero time. And sometimes they don't even have time to go to the bathroom. And there was actually like a subreddit where it was a bunch of, Amazon delivery drivers and they were posting pictures of water bottles full of pee because they had to literally urinate in the water bottles because they didn't have enough time to stop and go to the bathroom. So that's one of the things that they're advocating for is just bathroom breaks, which seems like a normal thing to, to have. But if you're 
crunched on time, then sometimes you just don't have enough time for that. Yeah, I saw um, executive uh, Dave Clark uh, was backlashed by like Bernie Sanders and Republican Mark Pocan of Wisconsin um, for making these tweets um, that were against um, Amazon. Uh, The Republican uh, Mark Pocan was saying that um, hourly pay doesn't make you progressive workplace when when you union bust and make workers urinate in water bottles. And the company effectively kickstarted uh, like an entire new uh, news cycle with its like its corporate backlash and tweets. I saw like the Amazon Twitter was like poking fun at uh, some of these tweets and like saying that they were false, like yada, yada, yada. But then but then like uh, I think Amazon is pretty progressive in the, in the sense of its competitors like Walmart, Target. They do offer better benefits than them. But I think they're just getting more backlash because they are such a large company that they are kind of the the status symbol. People are people are always looking at them and using them as the uh, using them to compare against other um, other like companies. Um, but back in 2018, uh, Bernie Sanders was the one that made but pretty much forced Amazon to raise their minimum wage up to fifteen dollars. Um, and then also recently, I saw Target as of 2020 raise their minimum wage up to $15. And uh, I believe Walmart made their average pay, not their minimum wage, but their average pay around $15.25 an hour. So they're also kind of meeting those, those standards that, that we're seeing. Um, but have you guys heard those stories about like those drivers having to defecate in like in bags or like being in bottles? Yeah. It's, like, it's disgusting. And sometimes they'll leave it for the other drivers. Right, right. <laughs> they'll like leave it in the cup holder. Like, you know, it's full of pee and they'll go and think it's a McDonald's cup and they end up. <laughs> yeah, right, bro. It's gross. That's disgusting. Yeah. 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 I worked, I'm working for UPS right now. And I think really it's just a tough year for the logistics industry, just from the standpoint of everybody is shipping stuff out and everybody is ordering stuff online. And so for the people like UPS, Amazon, FedEx, they have to be on point. And from that standpoint, like if you're going to be putting in 40 hours, 60 hours a week with you burning yourself down to the ground, you want to be able to have the backing to say like, hey, I feel like I'm getting the benefits that I need to be able to say that I'm putting in this work and getting the full benefits from doing so. And I think that's the biggest thing. And when it comes to like peeing in cups and defecating, like that's disgusting. I don't think that really happens, to be honest with you, because I was no, with, no but, it does. Like there was a but like from the standpoint of-, of like everybody's doing it like to where it's a problem. Like I don't I don't think so. Like there's stops, there's porta potties because like I've been with drivers and they have 300 packages, right? And they have yeah. to be able to deliver the packages, 350, right? And it's like a bunch of packages. And typically they have somebody helping them, like a driver helper. But there's other times where like during the COVID-19 pandemic, drivers have some type of reason that they don't want a driver helper. Like maybe their wife is high risk and if they get COVID, they could potentially give it to their wife and that could be a problem. So you have drivers doing 350 packages by themselves and still finding a way to go to the bathroom. I will say, however, UPS is unionized. And from being unionized, they get like the top of the top benefits. Like I'm talking about, like they get the best. Like you have teachers working at UPS where I'm working at anyway. Like they work at UPS from three to eight. And then they go into like some type of uh, public school and be able to teach just because the benefits are top of the notch at UPS. And that's because of the union. And also from that standpoint, like the, it's really hard to fire UPS workers. Um, it's really hard just to like, like there's so many things that the union provides for you that the company itself wouldn't necessarily provide. And I think those are definitely benefits for a unionization or unionizing. It's just the fact that, you know, it seems like Amazon is providing a lot of great things for their employees. It's just a matter of the employees wanting more. Yeah, and I think that that union unionization and UPS definitely makes a difference. Yeah, like it's it's crazy, bro. Like they kind of like manipulate like the system to this from like this perspective of like, hey, we got this union behind us. Like we know you can't really do anything because at the end of the day, we got a whole crew of people behind us to say something if you try to come at our neck. Like you got a bunch of guys that don't show up to work. Like you can literally just, not. It's definitely unfortunate sometimes. And the yeah, same like thing you can happens. not show up to work. Like 
10 times, right? Like literally 10 times in a month and not get fired due to the union. Like the union will back you up. And people are just like coming in whenever they want, whenever they please. Or if they're mad at a supervisor, for example, like supervisors aren't supposed to be helping you. And that's the thing because of the union as well. Like they see it as the supervisors taking time away from your tasks. And with that time, you're able to earn money. So essentially they're taking money out of your pocket, right? And so workers might sometimes melt that and the supervisors might just try to be try to be helpful, like due to the fact that this has been a crazy, crazy year. And if they don't like that supervisor and they see that supervisor helping somebody, they can write a report and potentially get that supervisor fired just for simply taping up a box. You know what I'm saying? So like unions like are very beneficial, but they also have their downsides as well if the people look to um, manipulate them. And that's a big thing as well. Yeah, so some industry watchers see Amazon's recent PR um, as proof that they feel confident about their the, the vote for the unions that like the, the union won't get passed. How do you think, how do you see Amazon PR playing out? Do you think it's been effective or how, how do you guys take it? Like the recent tweets and they've had a lot of executives, Bezos has come out and talked about it. Um, how do you guys, how do you guys see that? I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely makes them look bad. Like it, to an extent, like I, I see, I see the point of unions, but as, as Nate noted, like even teacher unions, like there could be a terrible teacher and they won't get fired because of the union. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's definitely benefits to a union, but there's also like, yeah, I, I, I don't know, honestly, because it's also Alabama too. And Alabama is a lot more conservative in that aspect and unions like if it was if it was in like Michigan or like Connecticut or something like that, like yeah, it would go through without a doubt. But I don't know. It it depends. I think yeah, Ford hasn't Ford had like unions in the past couple of years. Oh like they yeah, have, like GM, like the big three really. They they're big proponents of that. Well, there's also the Speedsters that have been around in the Midwest for forever. I mean, unions are really big in in like the Midwest and around New England and stuff. Didn't GM just have a situation a couple of years ago about a union and like union problems or something like that? Or like I had, it, I felt like it had something to do with their employees and then like the union had to step in, step in. I don't know about that. I'll be honest. Okay. Cause so I felt like from the standpoint of something like that was going on and then like the stock price dropped and like, I forgot what it was specifically, but like, it was probably like a strike or something. Yeah, GM oh. GM um, employees went on strike, um, yeah, yeah. but it, but it ended. But uh, I think GM lost around like a billion dollars from that yeah. strike, yeah. Uh, which was hard hitting. But I guess I, they got their message across for sure. And what were they striking <laughs> for? Yeah, what know? were they striking for? Um, because I did hear about a strike like over the summer, because yeah. something I knew it was something with like auto, but. But they're protected. That's the thing. Like you can do things like that when you're protected, and it kind of puts the company on the back, on the back of their, on the on the wall. Their back's against the wall. I was a struggle to get that analogy out. Oh my god, <laughs> they're back uh, against the wall. So the strike surfaced a decade um, before the employees' frustration with the company, which severely cut back benefits and pay for workers during the Great Recession. So back mm -hmm. in 08, 09. Um, uh, Employees felt jilted once the automaker began profiting more after the recession. Um, and the new deal does little to change that dynamic, but it does make some progress from what they had before. And so a couple of wins uh, that you um, that GM uh, gave some of their employees was pay raises. Um, they invested in factories, so better working conditions, better equipment, um, temperature and transitional workers. Uh, this is now a process for temporary workers to become permanent workers um, three years into the job. And then healthcare costs uh, remain the same. So they did not increase um, and they were left untouched. Um, so the company had announced plans to increase premiums, but back down once the strike happened. Um, and then permanent workers will also would also get an $11,000 signing bonus and temporary workers a $4,500 signing bonus. So maybe we could see something like this happen from Amazon. Maybe they will it may potentially give their employees bonuses or because we saw that with Goldman Sachs, right? They were getting yeah. crazy work weeks, 100 hour work weeks. And then um, they decided to give their employees uh, a bonus. So 
maybe we'll see that eventually. And even yeah. just the working conditions is sometimes enough. Like sometimes they don't even care about money. They're just like, I just want to be able to go to work and enjoy myself somewhat. Yeah. And I was just about to touch on that point. Like I could see it potentially getting to a point where they have to unionize just from the standpoint of it can be a pretty strenuous job. Like you're taking a toll on your body. And I could see it from the standpoint of people are like, hey, if I'm going to sacrifice my body, you need to sacrifice some of your profits and invest in us, whether that be healthcare or some some benefits when it comes to like a 401k match. Maybe it's not a complete match. Like I wasn't sure whether or not like it was like a 5% contribution, 50% or like a 100% match. But like maybe they need to step it up from that standpoint because like you are putting your body on the line. Like you're lifting heavy boxes, you're rushing now, you could potentially get into an accident. Like so many things that can happen. There's so many factors. And I believe that as more and more um, emergence comes from people getting into this e-commerce market, right? Leaving these brick and mortar stores and shopping more online, these Amazons, FedEx, and UPSs will be seen as even more pivotal for our economy. And if that's the case, we're going to need more employees. And if they're going to bring in more employees, more packages are going to come, then more people can potentially be at risk. So I see it as something that could potentially be something within five years, but in terms of right now, I don't think they're going to unionize. Can we also talk about the, uh, you mentioned like brick and mortar stores. We, we can also talk about how like the anti-competitiveness of Amazon where they, you know, they'll buy out these smaller stores and end up just like taking over the market. Like, well, what do you guys think about that? Aren't they in court right now? Like with all that, I think them and Alphabet are dealing with. Yeah. Lawsuit. Yeah. They've been in court since like mid last year. Yeah, and I'm interested to see like how that's gonna work. Like if you break up like each like like Amazon business, like how it then is ran. Like I don't understand that. Like if you expect- well, it's like um a lot of it isn't even just like them taking over the companies. It's like them fixing prices or being like this store can only sell their products on Amazon or else they'll make their prices higher versus other websites. So it's basically just like like those are like like textbook definition of like anti-competition, antitrust. So you're saying the government is trying to have Amazon have fixed prices for certain goods? It's just like if, you know, if they're being sold on two different, yeah, if they're being sold on two different websites, have it be the same price. Mm. Like, or, you know, it, it's, they've done a lot of sketchy stuff over the years and it's kind of, yeah. it's unfortunate because we have to buy it regardless. And yeah. a lot of the times you'll go to the, like, I remember, Last year, I went to Sears and tried to get a plunger for my, you know, toilet and literally went to like two or three different stores, couldn't find one, just ordered it off Amazon. And I'm like, this is why they're dying. Like, it's unfortunate, yeah. but it's true. And like, it seems obvious that Amazon has this monopolistic characteristic, but yet they haven't really been defined as a monopoly. Like, do you guys know why? Because it seems like from the standpoint of almost every sector, like they have their hands in it and they have like a big portion of whatever is in the bucket in their hand. I mean, I feel like it's just because they have, I, I st honestly, I still don't know why they don't, aren't classified as a not monopoly. Cause I remember I just read, like they own like 65% of the e-commerce in the U S and 6% like crazy. in, um, yeah, in the world. But I think the reason why they're not defined as a monopoly is because they do have like these other stores. Like they're just like the source of selling, but they're not necessarily the ones that are selling these products. They're kind of like an intermediary, but they're still monopolistic. Like it's, but they have so much money towards where they can just kind of pay people off and they've gotten away with it for so long, which it's is why I'm glad about these lawsuits. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, one man was behind this whole company. Yeah, like, Jeff from the Bezos standpoint just, of like, it started from him just starting up a bookstore, like a simple bookstore, then it's become this. And it gives me like Rockefeller vibes for sure. You know, just from the standpoint of being in the industry where you were in something that was emerging. And then from the standpoint, you were growing and you started buying out other companies and your employees didn't like the fact that they weren't being treated well. Like, because wasn't it J.D. Rockefeller that had his employees strike against him, like the Homestead Act or something like that? Yeah, that was like the, 
I think it was like there was like a riot that went on, like famous yeah, like, Haymarket like, riot or something like that. This is like I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about like the workers were just fed up, like they all went to the club, not the club. I'm sorry, like the bar got drunk and they're just like, yeah, we're we're tired of this. We're gonna stand up, and so they decided to strike. But a lot of the the employees like they were drunk, and so they brought guns. And the next thing you know, it's a full on gunfight due to the fact that people want better wages, people want better benefits, they want to be treated like human beings. And I definitely understand that, you know, we, we're in a, a time where inclusive, um, inclusive opportunities for all employees are very important. If they don't feel like they'll get that, then it could be chaos, it could be havoc. And I hope it doesn't get to that from any standpoint in the future, yeah. but you never <laughs> know, honestly, just from the standpoint of like, it might not be Amazon, it could be some somebody else. It could be a corporation, like you never know with these things. So I feel like that's mainly what unions try to prevent is um, more oppressive actions like that. Well, I think like um, for, cause there's also like a situation with Andrew Carnegie where he didn't trust the unions, didn't want them to unionize. And then the union, the unioners, like the, you know, they stood outside of the big factory. And then Andrew Carnegie went and brought in the Pinkertons, which was like a paramilitary group and just shot all of them it was like a huge mm -hmm. huge massacre that happened so maybe and it I don't, was Andrew Carnegie and not it was yeah and I know for a fact Andrew Carnegie had that happen but I think Rockefeller also had something else happen but regardless like I think we can kind of tie that to the media scrutiny that might happen like you, no one's gonna die but your reputation could be tarnished but listen listen like a big I feel like the main theme was not only getting benefits for the employees, but also it was like a hit to the wealthiest man in the world, you know, and this can be more of a, in like, we're really talking about the wealth distribution right now in 2021, due to the fact that, you know, a lot of wealthy individuals were able to come up off of the decrease of the stock market, the plummet of the stock market due to like investing and keeping their investments in there. Like we're seeing all the time highs in the stock market in this current time. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, people that were struggling, they're continuing to struggle, if not struggling even worse than they were previously due to the fact that they might not have jobs or opportunities have been completely cut off. So you're seeing the wealth gap get bigger and bigger and that's a problem and so i feel like this is something that can also be seen as helping out employees yes but also like a stick it to the man conversation like yeah. hey you know jeff bezos you're the richest man in the world but we want a piece of that and i feel like more than anything that could be where you might see a little bit of violence is where people are like hey we're not getting paid enough this wealth gap is getting ridiculous the government isn't doing enough we want to bring some chaos so we can make some change happen and i can see that happening but like that's that's like the worst outcome, honestly. Well, Jeff Bezos also is just like, he's not the most uh, philanthropic of individuals. Like I, I remember I was watching, looking at Forbes 500 and I was going through and obviously Jeff Bezos is at the top. And for every person they put like their philanthropic score, like how much, how much percentage of their wealth they give to charities. And you have like Bill Gates, who's given like a hundred million dollars to COVID research. You have Warren Buffett, who's given 20% of his wealth. And he's like, a, he's like $80 billion. So that's like a few billion dollars worth of his wealth. It's just a yeah. charity. And Jeff Bezos, he had the lowest. He had like a one, he had, he had like half a star. I'm like, seriously, like it, yeah. I'm disappointed, but not surprised. Because I think like back when people were donating to COVID, he gave $100,000 to charity, which is like, yeah, it's $100,000. But that's like less than a cent for him. Right. Like literally. Right. It's just, you know, it makes, it racks your brain because it's just like, this guy is a multi-billionaire mm -hmm. and he just doesn't care, you know? And when we talk about money, like we also have to talk about power and influence and he has a lot of power and influence from the standpoint that he's the second richest man in the world and he can make a lot of things happen. He could change a lot of things and it's the fact that he's not doing anything that has a lot of people really shaken up really upset about the whole situation really upset about hey there's so many wealthy people while i'm struggling on 15 dollars an hour like what's going on and of course yes the wealthy people were able to capitalize on opportunities that allowed them to become wealthy through struggle and strife and now they're able to succeed with all this money in their pocket but then at the same time when people are struggling they feel like the struggling is equal and due to the fact that it's equal they want an equal piece of the pie 
And so that's where we get to like a whole socialism conversation. And I feel like more than anything, the U.S. won't ever get to that point in time, but we are seeing a shift to where people want more equal, more equal opportunities, but also like equity. And equity is a big piece of the conversation too. And so um, long story short, like I feel like the union will be able to help from the standpoint of getting the employees the benefits they need. I also feel like it could be a start to something if it's not handled in the proper manner of people that are at a disadvantage to rise and say something for the people that are making significant more significantly more money than them and have significantly more opportunities than they do due to the fact that they are higher in economic prosperity. Yeah, I think we're seeing a shift of why unions um, are, are coming back because in the 40s, it was all about work conditions, you know, we were, we were industrializing, right? And we had to get better work conditions, but now it's more about, um, you know, the wage gap, you know, the social inequality among the top and the bottom, it's growing, right? And I think people, like you were saying, want some part of equity. You know, they, they don't just want better work conditions because everyone has, you know, at this point, everyone kind of has the same working conditions if you're in America, right? But people are looking to close the wage gap, you know? I think that's why, uh, Amazon, um, why they're having this union or they're unionizing is because they, they want to, they see the top, they see Bezos and he's doing great. But then the people at the bottom that are doing a lot of the labor for that company, they're not seeing those benefits. So I think that's why a lot of these people are, are wanting to unionize. But uh, I think the boat's coming. I don't know how long it takes for the boat to be calculated, but hopefully soon, hopefully we'll have right. a friend. Yeah, it was like a few weeks. A few weeks? Okay. okay. So by the end of this month, hopefully we'll, uh, I think they just started counting like, what, four days ago or something? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see by the end of this month. So I look forward to it. I mean, that's, that's if, the, if the corporate governance of Amazon doesn't shut it down before that, I mean, <laughs> they might just be like, nope, you're not allowed to unionize. Just put their yeah, foot down. I, I don't think it's going to get passed. I don't think it's as popular as some people think it is. Like, I think Amazon is like way ahead of the curve with all these benefits they give their employees. I just think it's a small group in this, in this Alabama plant that they, maybe they're unhappy, but I think most Amazon workers are happy with their conditions because compared to their competitors, they have way better benefits, better pay, like way, they, they were doing this before any of their competitors ever started doing this. Like they were one of the, the forefronts in, raising their minimum wage up to $15. Like mm -hmm. Target didn't do it until this year. Like that's crazy. But Amazon, I think I think they're they'll be they'll be all right in the long term. Um so oh they'll definitely be all right. Jeff Bezos yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh like 150 billion dollars. <laughs> if you enjoyed the discussion, please like and share the podcast on Apple and Spotify. The Spartan Journal podcast is part of Michigan State University's Wealth Management Association, a student organization whose goal is to inspire the next generation of financial advisors. The Spartan Journal news team releases a newsletter every Monday morning comprised of financial literacy and the week's market updates. Feel free to follow us on social media at MSU WMA and check out our website at MSUWMA.com. Anything heard on the MSU WMA podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice.